Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the final step before we code up the vortex panel method. This video is similar to the source panel method system of equations video in that we're building up the system of equations using the normal velocity at every control point. The difference here is that we'll need one more equation uh, based off of the cutout condition. So how did we get the source panel method normal velocity equation? Well we started with the expression for the velocity potential due to a single source as capital lambda over 2 pi times natural log of r then we combined a uniform flow with source panels approximating the airfoil in this equation, which is the velocity potential induced at point P due to the uniform flow and then due to the source panels. We can then do the same thing for the vortex flow. So for a single vortex, the velocity potential is equal to negative capital gamma over 2 pi times theta. And then we can combine uniform flow plus vortex panels that approximate the airfoil uh, where the velocity potential induced at an arbitrary point P is equal to the uniform flow contribution, which is the same as here, plus the vortex panel contribution. Two things to note here. First is that there's a negative in here because there's a negative in the single uh, vortex velocity potential equation, and there's no negative here because there's no negative in this equation. Second thing to note is that these here, the lambda and the gamma, are lowercase, whereas the ones up here are uppercase. That's because these are either the source strength per unit distance or the vortex strength per unit distance. And the lambda and the gamma here are outside of the integral because in our derivations here we've assumed that the source strengths or the vortex strengths are constant on a panel, J, which is why it's outside the integral, but can vary from panel to panel. So on the previous whiteboard, we had the expression for the velocity potential at an arbitrary point P. Here we can just find the velocity potential induced at the control point of panel I. So we have phi I, same uniform flow term, similar uh, vortex panel term, except the theta PJ is now theta IJ. To solve for the normal velocity on the ith panel, we just take the normal derivative. So we have the normal velocity on the ith panel is equal to d phi I d N I. Here we have this term, which if you want to see how we get from this and then take the normal derivative to this, you can look at my flow around an airfoil video. And then here we have the uh, vortex uh, panel term where we have d theta ij d ni because this term does not change with ni so we just take the partial derivative inside the integral here and you'll note that this expression the integral expression here is kij from one of my previous derivation videos so at some point in the summation we will get to the point where i is equal to j for the source panel method when we got to i is equal to j, the value of the entire summation term was equal to lambda i over 2. For the vortex panel method, when i is equal to j, this whole thing is equal to 0. So we can rewrite the equation up here as the normal velocity on the ith panel is equal to the uniform flow term plus the summation uh, from j is equal to 1 to n when j does not equal i of this term in here. And this is all equal to 0 because we have no flow into or out of the airfoil. And you'll note that this here, this gives us n unknowns, and the n unknowns are the gamma j's, right? All the vortex panel strengths, and that's what we're trying to solve for using the system of equations. So to create the system of equations, we're going to simplify this system down into a three-panel geometry, and then we're going to write the equation for the normal velocity for every single i panel. And so here we have the three-panel geometry. We have panel one, panel two, panel three. And on panel one, the vortex strength is gamma one. For panel two, it's gamma two. And for panel three, it's gamma three. And this is the same normal velocity equation from the previous whiteboard. Okay, so let's just go over one of these equations because they're all essentially the same. So we're gonna go over the i is equal to two equation. So we are getting the normal velocity on the uh, i is equal to two panel. And this here is the term from the summation. And so we're st we'll start with that. So j is equal to one. That's our first iteration of the summation. So we have minus gamma one over two pi times k two one. Two because we're on i is equal to two. One because we're on j is equal to one. Then if we go to the next uh, summation here, then we have j is equal to two, but that means that i is equal to j, so that's gonna be zero. Then we go on to the next one, so we have j is equal to three, that's okay. And so we have minus gamma three over two pi times k two three. Again, two is from the ith panel, three is from the jth panel. Then we add in the uniform flow contribution, which is v infinity cosine beta two, because that is the i is equal to two panel, and this is all equal to zero. And the same is true for the VN1 and VN3 equations, and all of the unknowns are shown 
in red here. And you can see that we have three unknowns here for the three panels. We have gamma one, gamma two, and gamma three. And down here at the bottom, I'm just showing where these are coming from. So the bracketed terms is from the vortex panel summation. That's this up here. These are from the uniform flow, that's here. And then the equals zero is because the normal velocity at every control point is equal to zero. So I've taken the equations from the previous whiteboard and I've just rewritten them up here, including those zeros for the i is equal to j terms. And this just shows that it's easier to put it into matrix form. So if I'm looking at uh, these equations up here, I'm looking at the coefficients uh, for all these gamma terms, and that's what I'm putting in this big matrix that I'm calling A down here. So on the main diagonals, we just have the zeros, and on the off diagonals, we have uh, negative k21 over 2 pi, that's right here, negative k31 over 2 pi, that's here, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then in the x array, we have the unknown, so those are all the gamma, so gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And then uh, I've moved all of the uniform flow terms to the right hand side because we know both. Uh, v infinity and beta i. And so on the right hand side in the B array, we have minus all of these terms over here. Similar to what we did in the source panel method, we're just gonna multiply both sides by two pi. And so you could see in the A matrix, all of these were over two pi. So multiplying them by two pi just leaves us with negative of the kij values. Then we still have all the gammas here, the unknowns we're solving for. And on the right hand side, each term now has a two pi in it. So the system up here was for the three panel uh, geometry that we were solving for, but we can extend this to n panels. We see the zeros on the main diagonal again, and then down here we're solving for the velocity on the i is equal to n panel, which is why we have the n in the first position here. And then this column here is the j is equal to n term of the summation, which is why we get the n in the second position. Now you might think at this point that, okay, we have this system of equations, we have n equations and n unknowns, so we can just solve it the same way we did in the source panel method, but the problem here is that we haven't applied the cutting condition yet, which is what we'll do now. So I'll be using the simplest method in this implementation that you see here, but I will be using a different implementation in my combined source and vortex panel method videos. So on the screen, you'll see a few different sources, and from the Curry source, uh, you can see that we're trying to get the flow to adjust itself in such a way that the rear stagnation point coincides with the trailing edge. And so we're going to apply this by using the other two quotes from the other two sources, which essentially say that the vorticity at the trailing edge be zero. Based off of the statement that the vorticity at the trailing edge should be zero, or gamma of the trailing edge is equal to zero, we have the schematic here with the first panel and then the nth panel with gamma one and gamma n. And so we can write the equation that we need to add into our system as gamma one plus gamma n is equal to zero. And so you'll note that if we just add in this expression to our existing system of equations, we're gonna get an over-constrained system in the sense that we have n unknowns, but with n plus one equations. So what we do instead is just replace one of the existing expressions in the matrix. And so in this particular case, I'm replacing the last equation. So looking at the system of equations here, everything is the same up here, but then in the last one, you could see that this is the same as this equation here, because we have one times gamma one. These are all zeros, so it's plus zero times gamma two, plus zero times gamma n minus one, plus one times gamma n that's this left-hand side, is equal to zero, is equal to zero. And now that we have this final system of equations where this matrix is A, this array here is X, that's what we're solving for, and this on the right-hand side is B, we can just solve this using whichever method you want. Uh, so for example, in MATLAB, we use X is equal to A slash B, and then in Python, as long as you have NumPy imported as NP, then you can write np.linalg.solve A comma B, and that'll give you the results for all of the vortex panel strengths. Using these solved for vortex panel strengths, we can plug these back into the tangential velocity equation to solve for the tangential velocities on each of the panels, and thus the pressure coefficient on each of the panels. So my next video will be converting the source panel method airfoil code that I wrote into a vortex panel method airfoil code. Thanks for watching.